What most common reasons couples stop dating and how can they overcome these obstacles? Kids is a huge one. Sometimes it's hard to get childcare. You pay more for childcare than you do on a date. On a date, yeah. Uh-huh. So that's a huge one. And one of the, the things that I would say to that is another thing that people stop dating is holding on to bitterness, like holding on to hurt and not forgiving. It's hard to be intimate with someone and to do something for someone when you're holding it in the forefront of your mind that this person hurt you. So I think that that's also a huge one. And then another one is being tired and stressed. You know, your day-to-day activities, you get to so routine that you forget yeah. what it's like today. You forget that you should be dating. What's up? What's up, Bravehearts community? This is Sean Heineman, your premier pre-engagement coach, back with another segment of It's Scary to Remarry, inspiring you to love fearlessly. We have a returning guest She's no stranger to the show. She is a certified love and intimacy coach. She helps men and women get closer to their partner while building confidence in their sexuality. I think this is maybe her third, fourth time maybe on the show. Brave Hearts community, let's show some love to Sherelle Thomas. What's up, Sherelle? Hi, thank you for having me. It's always uh, a good time, good conversation. Looking forward to this time. Um, I feel like you always ask the right questions that just pull the nuggets out. So I'm looking forward to where this conversation is going to go tonight. Oh, yeah, for sure. And uh, we have some questions as well, but we're going to save that towards a little later towards the end of the show. But if you do have any questions for our guests, uh, we're going to talk about uh, never stop dating your partner and we're going to discuss uh, also like is the relationship over like what do you do in, in that process like how do you know that it's over we're going to discuss that and so much more there's people who have questions so if you do have a question make sure you leave it in the comments below Sherelle I want to jump right into this uh, because we talked about never stop dating your partner and keeping that connection right uh, I what is your definition of never stop dating your partner? I think it's my definition is ensuring that you keep that connection, that door open by spending quality time with one another to build a deeper connection. Um, like, where you're you're continuously putting forth the same amount of effort that you did in the beginning when you were initially interested, mm -hmm. like allowing those feelings to evolve um, and grow and nurture in the relationship. But but through action, not just feeling the feelings, but also through action, like same way you took that action. Don't take it for granted just because you've been with somebody five, 10 years. And now you're looking like, oh, they know I love them or they know I care. That same way that you were consciously, I want to spend time with you. I want to get to know you. I want to ask questions, like put forth that same effort now. Like that's what I think continuously dating is. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Totally agree. Because uh, I heard a quote one time that said complacency is the enemy of great relationships. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Never get comfortable. Yeah. Never get comfortable. Yeah. Like you allow yourself to settle into the relationship, but never get comfortable to the point where you're taking it, like indirectly taking advantage mm -hmm. and thinking that, oh, I no longer need to do this. They know I love them. Like, no, don't do that. Yeah. Because the more you know, or the more you think you know a person, they, they've evolved already, right? And then... You know. Yeah, so it's so important to check in. I think that's another thing where people fail, not fail, but they get disappointed in relationships is they start, they think they know a person. And then when they do something for that person, that person no longer like it, then they get mad, you know, like, oh man, you know, and they disappointed, like, because they thought they knew the person. But it's one of those things where 
And don't get comfortable. Always ask questions. Always check in. Do you still like this? Do you still want this? Are you still interested in this? And a huge thing that I think is so important, I didn't hear um, somebody else mentioned this to me and he was talking about how someone else told him this and this is the mindset that he choose to have every single day is regardless of what him and his wife go through he choose to fall in love with her every single day waking up choosing i am falling in love with my life my wife all over again mm -hmm. i think that that works both ways and people can cultivate that by just consciously choosing what's what's one thing that i can do to fall in love with my wife you know today like what's one thing that i appreciate about her what's one thing that i can look at that will draw me in that I can focus on that I can really fill into um and vice versa it could go with the the you can view your women can view their husband the same way as well yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah for sure because one thing that I've been implementing lately is um waking up earlier before everyone else in the house um and I have to be to work at six. So, but I'm up at around like 345 in the morning. Mm -hmm. So I get up at around 345 um, just to be intentional about my prayer life. Right. And to be grateful for like what we have and just like thinking on the good things. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that just helps me, helps keep me focused uh, no matter what happened last night, but to, you know, get a new 24, and I get to start over again and, and and think about those good things. So I, yeah, you gotta be intentional every single day. And I love that you do that. And I love that you mentioned that because it, it can be um, an example, a process that other people can connect to and start implementing as well. But that's a form of self love. And when your tank is full, it's so much easier to fill everybody else's tank. It's so much easier to sow those seeds because one, you taking care of yourself. Two, you prioritizing your relationship with God. And I wholeheartedly just believe that by having that quiet time with God, that's kind of like cheat code. You know what I mean? Like God can give you insight on, you know, do this today, inspired action, do this today, because he know what everybody else, especially as a leader of the house, like he know what your wife is struggling with. He know what the kids need. So when you prioritize those things, it allow everything else to fall into place. And then not only that, but also praying with your wife, you know, like that's a form of connection. That's a deep form of intimacy when you can pray together before you go to bed, when you wake up in the morning, like set that tone, have that point of connection because that's a, a place of vulnerability. And when you're vulnerable with your partner, what happened? The guards come down. You're on even playing field. And yeah. it makes things so much easier. You have more patience. You have more interest. You have more like um, excitement, more energy. And it's not to say like challenging times aren't going to come because they will. But you handle them differently when it's just that one challenge in front of you versus you carrying 10 and don't do anything about it. Yeah. Then another challenge come and what happened? You blow up. And it make it hard to forget those things as opposed to move past them. Mm, I love that. I love it. Yeah, because my kids, they would hold me accountable. They were like, Dad, you, you you come in here and pray with us. I love it. You know, we have a little little placard on the wall that, you know, they're, they're biblical affirmations. And they say it every night before they go to bed. They, I'm like, I got to get ready to go and record. And they like, stop. <laughs> <laughs> right i love it yes pause pause because you can't get those moments back can't get them back and, and i love that because they because when you do get a rhythm you do have that um uh that accountability because my wife do the same thing she's like oh we ain't prayed in a couple of days i'm like yeah, yeah it's I'm also just the mood like how does that make you feel when you and your wife pray together like oh it is I, I I would say this well for for us because we we uh, created this rhythm. Um, it is like this deep intimacy, right? Sometimes I ask, I'm like, "Hey, what do you feel like God is saying to you in this season of your life?" Or I'm like, "How can I pray for you?" You know, into those specifics, 
And it just makes the intimacy that much deeper. It's like we're connected physically, mentally, you know, spiritually. Um, and I just think it takes us to another level, even like when we're going to church and we're together and stuff like that. I think that spiritual piece It's like that happens in the heavens first before it happens in the in the natural world, you know. So it's just like I feel that much more connected to her because we had a spiritual bond together. So mm -hmm. I I love it. And it helped us over time. Yeah. It keep us connected. So grateful. For that. You know, it remind me of like eating together. You know what I mean? Like when you And your partner, y'all enjoying a meal is both satisfying to both of y'all taste buds. It's a different form of satisfaction, whether if it's just you eating by yourself, mm -hmm. you know, you feel full and it's good versus you and your partner eating together and both of y'all satisfied, both of y'all full. Like it's just like, like triple the amount of pleasure. And I feel like it's the same thing when you bring God into the equation as well. Yes, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Because the food hit different, you know, when you eat with somebody. <laughs> yeah. Especially somebody that you care about, somebody for that sure. you love. Like, for sure. And they know, you know, it's good and they know it's good. Like it's pleasure all around. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. How can how can busy couples balance the demands of daily life while still prioritizing quality time with each other? I, I think one thing is always identify your why. Like, why do you make that decision? Why do you choose or why do you desire to prioritize intimacy? What what benefits does it have? You know, it, just like how we just talked about seeking God together, the benefits that it have, you know, you respond differently, you're more patient, so on and so forth. So I think that's the first step is identifying why you desire to prioritize that in your relationship like what benefits what value is this going to have because on those moments and those busy days where you don't want to do it it's gonna get you up to do it just like going to the gym you know like when you set that out you make a why you're not gonna go in the gym one time and, in my mind i do but you're not gonna go in the gym one time and get instant results in my mind i i'll be i'll be like oh you see that that one there before but In reality, you know, like it's not going to be, okay, I have this, this that I have in mind of why I'm doing this. And then I instantly get these results. But if you keep that why in front of you, you understand that over time, this is helping strengthen the relationship. It, and I really identify what, what, what ways does it strengthen a relationship? You have more sex, you have more quality time, you have more intimacy, you got their back. Like it, it, uh, doesn't breed room for a third party to come in, you know, mm. like different things like that. So jot down like your why. And then another thing is incorporating it in the least amount of impact as possible. So what I mean by that is prioritizing this time and incorporating it where it's not having a negative impact. So say, for example, um, you know, you and your wife want to spend some extra quality time together. Don't plan it while you got to go to work. You know, like that's putting more stress and strain on the relationship. But where can we find this within our schedule that it'll be easier for us to slide in? Yo, you both shower every day, shower together. You know, you it doesn't have to equate in sex, but it's different things like that where you can prioritize spending that quality time together, even though it's busy. Mm -hmm. Um cooking dinner or getting dinner, you know, whatever it is, like those main points that you have to do, try to incorporate one another and do it together as opposed to just one. But having that why and and finding ha time hacks, where can we spend quality time together? Mm, yeah. And the third thing that I want to add to that is just being spontaneous, seeking those moments where, you know, I just looked at the closet, so I'm going to say this, but like where the kids in there doing their homework and, you know, you lock your partner in the closet and tickle them or, you know, moments like that, just silly things. It doesn't have to be, okay, we're going to go spend that two hours going on a date night. If your schedule don't allow for that, don't force it. But sitting down, having a conversation in the closet, 
that's a form of intimacy that a lot of people don't even know, like the impact that it has, that closeness, that unity, like that eye contact, no distractions, the hiding, like you'll be surprised at how many different benefits it will have just seeking moments like that, just being spontaneous. Mm, yeah, the spontaneity, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. good because, and and, I, and something that I, I'm working on as well is like not having my phone in the room at night mm -hmm. um, when we get ready to go to bed, like that whole thing. Uh, so when we are laying in bed, because I, I, I like laying on my back, mm -hmm. but I'm like, when I'm talking to my wife, I'm like, let me make sure I'm looking at her. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. Know? Because that's a form of connection as well, mm -hmm. the eye contact. Yeah. I know I'm I'm big on that. And I think because my life is on social media and a lot of like my private clients and then like the way that like I have to close my eyes to tap into, because if I'm looking at you and you scratch like this, my thought gone. I'm <laughs> looking and paying attention. What's itching? Like it's. So sometimes I have to close my eyes to like really zone out. And because of that, that's not a healthy form of communication. You know what I mean? Like I got to close my eyes and look away. I know people be like, what's wrong with her? But hey, if you want this message or you want me to hear what you're saying, <laughs> let me close my eyes. But I think that's a very valid point, you know, making sure that you have that eye contact because or even looking in the same direction, it it's engaging as opposed to like this yeah yeah i heard uh, i heard oprah winfrey say one day when she interviewed her guests especially like if they're walking she said she liked to walk side by side mm -hmm. because like you said it's that that it's like a common goal it's like y'all going somewhere together um yeah. and, and i think today i think we might have lost that art form of looking eye to eye yeah, because you can't. <laughs> like, I'm looking at you, but you probably looking at that part of the screen. <laughs> like, the camera up here. <laughs> yeah, right? Because I have to make sure I'm looking up at the camera to make sure that I'm looking, that you see me, but you're kind of down. So I still exactly. have to look in the, yeah. So, <laughs> no, I get it. Uh, I, I can go on with the eye contact thing. There's, there's so much I want to say about that, but I'll leave that alone. Mm -hmm. Uh. Do you have some time, some creative day ideas that don't require a lot of time or money, but still build connection? I know you talked about like with uh, the closet and stuff like that and the time like that. But what about like if you just strap for cash? Easy peasy. You got TV, Internet, <laughs> put a board out. Like it don't take much snacks in the kitchen, you know, go spend five, ten dollars on different snacks or either pull what you have, you know, out of the refrigerator, make something creative, mm -hmm. but turn on the TV, put a fort down on the floor, quality time. Like the, the key is to break up the day-to-day um, -day, like interactions. Yeah. I'm, I'm a cheap date. I am a cheap date. I, and people like <laughs> when I was dating, People used to be like, what you want to do? And my thing would be like, go to the park. Like, let's go go out in nature and hike. You know, that's another thing. Um, exercising together is another like date night. A big one that I am um, a huge, I got a pickup truck. So, you know, going to one of my favorite hot dog stands in the Chicago land area, getting hot dogs, sitting in the back of the pickup truck, eating and the hot dogs, like, Two dollars. Nice. I don't even eat hot dogs. That's why I say I'm a cheap date. Because all I'm getting is fries on the bun, and that's my <laughs> my veggie dog. But different things like that. Like you have to find out what are you interested in, what is your partner interested in, and then look for free stuff to do like around that. Um, it can be going to watch airplanes, like vis visualizing, using it as a manifest manifestation technique. You know visualizing you and your partner being on this private jet or whatever this airplane seeing where it go and just talking about it, having a conversation okay when we get there what do you think the weather is going to be like and engage ask each other questions that will allow your 
um, energy to feel in your mind. Your mind doesn't know if you're there, if you're in this car and mm -hmm. cold weather, or if you're in 80 degree weather on the beach. The key is to think it and to feel it. And like, that's another thing that you can do, but it all just depends on what, what it is that you and your partner are interested in. Because if you don't like being out in nature, you going out on a walk, that ain't gonna work. But finding different creative ideas. I can't remember the last time that I've been out on a date and it was like expensive mm -hmm. salads. Like, <laughs> you know, it's, it's not a thing. And then I think that's another thing too, is like sharing food. Um, mm. That's a form of intimacy too. So even if you strap for cash, like let's make it fun. You know, what's, what's a meal that we can go, we could share you know, not from a sense of this will always be our norm, but let's build that intimacy and that connection through that. Mm -hmm. I love that. That's good. Yeah. Sharing a meal together. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm for that. Yeah. <laughs> for sharing meals. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm for that for sure. And the reason why I ask too, because especially with social media, it's like everybody got to do it for the gram kind of thing. And, you know, everybody. So it's always this, it always have to be these huge dates, you know. It's like you got to live up to the hype. Um, unfortunately, you to get mad at me because I wouldn't <laughs> want to go. Don't take me to no fancy restaurant for what? All I eat is salads, like <laughs> you know. And sometimes I'm not even gonna say that because sometimes I do want the ambiance. I do want to go out. I do want to see that. I do want to splurge, but. To do that all the time, I just think it's ridiculous. That's my opinion. Another one I want to throw in there too, even if you don't, like I was going to say, like getting in the car, putting on music, going on a scenic drive, you know, having that conversation. If you ain't got the money for gas, just park your car in the garage, turn that key back, listen to music and talk about things. Like play different playlists and songs and dedicate songs to your partner you each come up with different songs where you know how they used to do on verses oh yeah yeah <laughs> they go back and forth but expressing how you feel to your partner mm -hmm. and y'all each pick a song on how you feel and keep playing it back and forth and see who win at the end like who, who had the most hits that's nice i like that <laughs> yeah the moments of of stillness i think that's something that's almost like a lost art you know it's, it's, it's like we always have to be doing something mm -hmm. um, but just to be still and be present mm -hmm. you know I, I think that's a deep form of intimacy it is it is have you ever like just sat there in silence with your partner let me tell you this <laughs> meditating with your partner oh and like that's one of the most amazing experiences like that you could ever have just meditating with your partner, sitting there in that stillness, just like you say, that quiet, that meditation music, feeling your partner's energy. It, it's If y'all haven't tried that, if you never experienced, try it. And I guarantee you, them panties coming off <laughs> the, minute, the minute you finish, because you don't realize that the, the connection is so deep and you're still and quiet and like all guards come down and it creates a, a sense of safety, this form of connection that you can't get any other way. Mm -hmm. Yep. I'm all for it. That quiet time. I guess the older I get, the more I appreciate silence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you have any questions for today's guest, make sure you leave them in the comments below. Thank you everyone for joining us and your experience what most common reasons couples stop dating and how can they overcome these obstacles? Kids, Kids is a huge one. Sometimes it's hard to get childcare. You pay more for childcare than you do on the date. On the date, yeah. Uh-huh. So that's a huge one. And one of the, the things that I would say to that is bedtime. Putting them down to bed at an early time, you know, and even if if they are older, like making them stay in their room, you mm -hmm. know, and this is your quiet time. But you have to prioritize that. I say, you know, I, to me, I felt like that's when my creativity came out the most because 
I had to get creative on how can we get it in? Like, how can we have this quality time? How can we have sex without them seeing us or hearing us? You know, and it's just like you you find different ways and get allow those creative juices to flow to really get you in the mood. So kids, it's a huge one. Um, another reason people stop dating is finances, mm -hmm. because especially with this day and age, like everything is really expensive and it make it harder to be able to enjoy those things without breaking the bank. But little do people know you can still form those connections and have that like amazing experience um without breaking a bank um another thing that people stop dating is holding on to bitterness like holding on to hurt and not forgiving it's hard to be intimate with someone and to do something for someone when you're holding it in the forefront of your mind that this person hurt you so I think that that's also a huge one. And then another one is being tired and stressed. You know, your day-to-day -day activities, you get to so routine that you forget yeah. what it's like today. You forget that you should be dating. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Because we have three three little kids here at the house with us. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, our nine-year-old has been diagnosed with ADHD. And then uh, our two youngest ones have autism. Oh wow! Okay. It is just like so. Like now we recording. They're asleep. <laughs> oh yeah. See, see, <laughs> yeah. Gotta be creative, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, and then you said about about finances too. It is. It's so expensive mm -hmm. to just go on a on a basic date. So expensive with these costs, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's. I what the grocery store and I was like I cannot believe a bag of chips is nine dollars <laughs> I'm and I'm not exaggerating it was literally eight dollars and 99 cents for a bag of chips like how that is crazy oh my god oh thank you for everyone who is joining us uh on TikTok so we got a lot of love going on here if you have questions for our guest Sherelle Thomas please feel free to drop those questions below uh, uh, before we move away from finances, let me also share um, a hack for you guys with dating. Please. Make sure you join the rewards programs, because when you are going out spending that money, like you can be getting free food in return and you can structure your dates like around um, different places like that. Not all restaurants have it, but some do. Mm -hmm. um, Groupon is another one maybe finding those different discounts and different things like that to help offset the cost. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. That's yeah. You get those, uh, those points, you know, you can exchange that in and get, you know, 50% off at a restaurant or something, maybe your favorite restaurant, you know, yeah. And even know. using credit cards, paying with your credit card that have points. Mm -hmm. And then that way, instead of just doing cash, you use a credit card for points, take that cash to pay that, and you still getting a reward and getting extra in return. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Before we switch into, uh, because now I want to kind of jump into the relationship being lost. Like, is it worth it? Is it worth it? And best thing any time. Sometimes you get into these relationships and you just wonder, like, where are we going? Like, what's 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 the what's the plan? What's the goal? You know, and sometimes people example for me, I stay in my last marriage five extra years longer than I should have. Yeah. Yeah. You know? um, and a lot of times men, they they stay in the marriage. They just like, you know what? I'm just going to thug it out. I'm just going to going to try to make it work, you know. Um, so I do want to jump into that, but before we do, I want to, uh, play a game with you, Sherelle, real quick. You ready? Yep. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, my wife uh, and I, we have created this, uh, intimacy questions card deck. We mm -hmm. created this, uh, you can find it at scarytoremarried.com. Uh, 
if you are on a date or if you're getting to know someone and you know you like on the brink of really starting this relationship, these are some great questions to ask. I know a lot of people have the the game night cards, but this is coming from a husband and wife. We really put our blood, sweat, and tears into this, and you know, coming from a man perspective and a woman's perspective. So I'm going to pull one of these cards and you can let me know what you think. Either you can say skip. If it's if it's too much, or we can talk about it. All right. You ready? Yep. Okay. Random. Who provided a safe space for your feelings in childhood? Ooh. Childhood feelings. Ugh. Um. Or did you have one? Question. I know. Like. My my grandmother, I really didn't express my feelings. Like I didn't have opportunities to express the way that I really felt. Mm -hmm. But I just know that with my grandmother, I used to always feel a safe place. Um, it my my dad's mom, I would always feel a safe place. Like I knew that I could be who I wanted to be like around her. It was even just being that, that stillness, that quiet, like I could be that. And I was accepted and I was loved. I felt unconditional love, but not in terms of feelings. I didn't, I didn't have that where I could ex truly express how I felt. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Actually, that wasn't until my last relationship. Like, I don't, I, I've never had where it was like, okay, tell me what you feeling, why you feeling like where I really felt I could be open and vulnerable. Like he provided that. Um, yeah, I'm not even going to get into the details of that, but let me just say like, that was, I, that was, he used to always tell me like, be selfish. Cause a lot of times I would suppress how I felt so that everybody else could get the way, get what it is that they want. He's like, stop thinking about other people. Just be selfish. What do you feel? What do you want? And that was a safe place for me to really speak up and learn to say, this is what I feel and this is why and ask for what I want. Mm. That's a great question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. These are yeah great date night questions. And uh, and I think it's very important to, to ask these kind of questions. You can find it at scarytoremary.com uh, because the, one of the reasons we came up with this question was because I struggle even still to, to this day with saying how I feel because I grew up in that era of children should be seen and not heard. Yeah. So yeah. it stunted my um, my communication growth. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So I, I still struggle with that to this day sometimes. Yeah. So uh, but that's a whole a different conversation. But that's just one of the cards from the deck that can really open up the door to really getting to know who you plan on being with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that. And like, the reason why I say like, it's such a great question is because it tells so much about a person. You know what I mean? And not only that, but it brings that awareness and makes you think like, wait up, hold up a minute. Like I didn't have that. And it make you know how important it is like to value that now, but also, you know, if my partner was to answer that the way that I did, like, I know that, okay, I got to be more mindful and encourage them and let them know that this is a safe place, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. I love that. Yep. You will find, yeah, you will find out so much um, because um, when my wife and I were in bed, you know, sometimes I ask her, sometimes I forget, but I'll be like, what's one thing you did for yourself today? And that always puts her self-care back on her because she would just set herself on fire to keep everybody else warm and i'm like no what did you do for yourself today and when she knows it's coming she'll be like oh i did this for myself today i'm like okay even if it's the smallest thing it's like something that you can do outside of everybody else yeah i love that i love that on so many different levels and i could <laughs> i could keep going on and on about it but i'm not i'm gonna be quiet <laughs> like i just love that y'all have that well, I mean, you know, I, I'm all about catching moments. So is there something that you want to say? I I, I believe in moments. So if there's oh. something that you want to share, yeah, we can catch her this moment. I just think that that's such a powerful tool to have because one, it creates a safe space for her to do something with herself, for herself and not 
like have regret about it or not feel shame or guilt about it. Like you're encouraging that. And then not only that, but what we were talking about earlier in terms of like your tank being full, if she filling up her own tank, guess what? She not looking to you to say, you got to do this for me. And this is huge. Ladies, if y'all listening, please hear me on this. A lot of times we put it off on our partner and get mad at them for something that we should be giving ourselves. Mm. I'm say it again a lot of times we get upset and mad at our partner and we put the responsibility on them when in reality we should be doing it for ourselves like you cannot ask your partner to do anything for you that you're not willing to do for yourself your mm. tank should be full and take that accountability because if you fill up your own tank you not waiting on him to do it. Like you're creating that, that even playing field, not from a deficit, but mm -hmm. you're up here where you guys can play together and maintain that together as opposed to being here and looking up and telling him to come down to get you. Like, no, take care of those things. Love yourself, prioritize yourself mm -hmm. and don't feel guilty about it. But at the same time, fill up that tank so that you can pour into others as opposed to waiting on people to save you, waiting on your partner to save you. Mm. Huge thing, huge problem when it comes down to orgasms. Like, you know, I think <laughs> that's a whole other subject, but that's the energy that it comes from. A lot of women get mad. Now, I'm not talking about those selfish lovers who like, not in three minutes and mm -hmm. not even thinking about it. like they just up there like being there. I'm not talking about that, but I'm talking about men who really put forth the effort and then the, the lady getting mad at him because she didn't climax. How you getting mad at him when you don't even know what you like? Like he guessing you the source. At least you should be leading him in the right direction. It's like blind leading the blind. And then you get mad at him because he couldn't find it. You didn't find it either, but you're not mad at yourself. Okay, I'll be quiet. <laughs> like, oh, that's a whole nother tangent. I can... Ooh, yeah, that's a yeah, yeah. We've had some of those conversations on, on past episodes. Yes. yes. Yeah, I had to link that oh, up. Oh, your old lady. <laughs> For sure. Oh, your oh, that should be a t shirt. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, uh, what was I about to say? Oh, I was I was about to say something. Oh, I was going to say there was a video, uh, a reel that I post on Instagram. I don't know if you've seen it, but uh, Sterling K. Brown, him and his wife from uh, what is the show called? Uh, this is us. The black guy, Sterling K. Brown. You know who that is? Uh huh. I don't remember which video, but if you go on. Yeah, there's a real lot posted. Him and his wife have a podcast and she was talking about invisible labor. Did you see that one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's talking about invisible labor and she's talking about how all the things that go on mentally that a woman have to remember for, you know, the kids. Oh, they got dentist appointments. Oh, they got to be dropped off at a game at two. Oh, these, you know, these conflicting schedules. I have to have all this stuff down. She called it invisible labor. I think she got it from somebody else, but I posted that clip and I think it's over like 4 million views. Like there's so many people going crazy about it. Um, and, and I was just thinking like, that's where the help comes in at home yeah. for me and to be, you know, helping at the house because this is the invisible labor is a real thing that a lot of women uh, struggle with. Um, yeah. yeah. You know, so. and just imagine like trying to figure out all of that. And this is how you operate 90% of your awake time. Like you, to, even when you're on the toilet, you think, that, oh, I got to hurry up because I got to go get dinner and I'm looking at this and I got to get this and I got like all of that. And then when you lay down and have sex, that don't go off. A lot of women don't know how to shut that off. They don't know how to shut that part of their brain off. I was just talking about this the other day, how, I used to, every Sunday, we would get up, get ready for church, do all of this. I would put the kids to bed, get dressed up for my husband with lingerie heels, go cook dinner, frying chicken in high heels while he's sitting on the couch, you know, watching football. 
I put them kids to bed. I had to read the bedtime story. I had to get everything out for tomorrow. Like that, all he had to do was just be and then prepare. His, my, I was ironing his uniform like for work and everything. It was everything was on me while he was just chilling. And then even after I do all this, then I got to come get you head. I got to do this. I got to pull out all the stops, like all of that. And I'm like, like, I was literally, I used to tell people all the time, I was a doormat, like when it came to that. And I thought that was the way that I was supposed to be. I was super mom. I, I wanted to be super woman. Now I'm like, fuck that. Like, <laughs> but it, like, no, you know, you go through all of that trying to quote unquote, like please this man and he don't even appreciate it. So then when it come down to Having sex, I can understand why a lot of women are drained and don't want it and they don't, you know, want to do it. I tell men all the time, I set you up to win. Two things. If y'all men listening, two things. One, take something off of her plate. Help her. Find out where what's the weak point. Babe, is there something I can help you with today? I think you just said that, you know, about you step in and you ask your wife, like, is there something that I can do to make things easier for you? One, ask her that. Two, also touch her without it having to lead to sex. Like touch her, massage her feet with, or if she don't like her feet rub, massage her back. Just hold her close. Not for you know, a long time, because again, if we got this schedule that we got a whole bunch of things to do, it's going to be uncomfortable because she's in constantly in go mode, but try to incorporate something, hold her when you go to sleep at night, hold her hand. If you don't want your, her body up against yours, like whatever the case may be, but have some form of physical connection that doesn't lead to sex. And I guarantee you, she going to be throwing it at you because it creates a sense of safety. It creates a sense of stillness where I can actually engage and want to engage with my partner in this way. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be, especially if guys are so used to touching their wives with the intent of sex in mind, when you touch her and you don't go to sex, her mind is going to be like, wait a minute, wait a minute. He didn't do that. And it's going to change reverse psychology. Like. Oh, you preach it now. That, that's a real right there. We're going to have to <laughs> pick that up, turn that into a real. <laughs> you you helping somebody. Put your, put your cash out. Uh, You're going to help somebody. Um, and that's real. And, and on some real talks, you're real. And I know we having rabbit trails, but I just, again, I, I like catching moments. Mm -hmm. And that's something I had to learn recently. I had to learn that, you know what? She just want to just cuddle. That's cool. Yeah. I have to be okay with that. Not with the, you know, the the thought of, oh, I'm going to get some. But yeah. no, this is just what she feel right now. She just want to just, you know, rest in your arms or whatever and be okay with that. But men, a lot of times we so just used to, oh, she touched me. It's, it's, it's about uh -huh. to Y'all get excited. But do you know why? Do you know why? Because- why? That's usually the form of how a man is touched. Like y'all don't get physical touch often. Physical touch for y'all is equivalent to sex. So in your mind, yeah, if she touched you, you ready to go. But in reality, this, this is another thing. I was going to do a reel about this too. Like encouraging men to go get a massage because let the guards down, you know, let somebody else touch you in a non-sexual way but you you have to have the willpower for that because if that's the most men that's the only form of contact but women is different we get our nails done we get our hair done you know we get our pedicures we have forms of different kinds of touch but y'all don't barber every now and then oh that is so good i never thought about that and and I, I had a female barber, and she probably was one of the best barbers I've ever had when I, I know I'm dating myself. I actually had hair, but <laughs> um, that's when, yeah, she, you know, and like you said, just having that self-control, like getting that touch, like it's okay, everything. Ah, I never put that together because I know for me as a child, this is a whole therapy session. Yes, um, yes. I, I never got, I never received a lot of touch growing up as a kid. 
from yeah. from my mom no shade to mom but now I can put the pieces together like oh you know woman touch me not just like anybody but somebody you know yeah I get that physical touch I'm like boom it's yeah 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 wow. yes because the brain is conditioned to think when I'm touched it's time to go but in reality like I think that if more men incorporated being touched, it will build that self-control. Like, wait a minute, they ain't touching me, you know, in that way. Like, it's okay, you know? I love that. That is so good. Because, yeah, I love getting massages. I like to just be, well, I, I'll be talking to my massage therapist. We be in there cracking up, but <laughs> <laughs> it, it's cool. I'm, I'm always running my mouth. Um <laughs> But like you say, the the non-sexual touch, just knowing that there's boundaries, it's this is this is all good. I'm 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 touching you for, you know, for whatever reasons outside of sex, but that's good because a lot of men don't get touched. And even when we, you know, go give another man some, you know, dap him up, give him some grip, some love or whatever, it's like hug for two seconds, one, two. Exactly, real quick. <laughs> yeah, real quick. Like it gotta be. And then y'all don't even have a lot of interactions with men, like like on the regular, not the way like women do, no. you know? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, I, I think it's a deficit. You guys are in a deficit when it comes down to touching. So because of that, when a woman touch you, like you ready to go because you're conditioned that this touch is leads to sex, like it's equivalent to sex when in reality, no, like this is another thing, like an opportunity to fill your tank up so you're not looking to her mm. for sex every time she touch you. So good. Oh my God, so good. This, see, this is why I like you being on the show. This is, <laughs> this is why, because we always getting fresh revelation. Uh, ooh, we, uh, what are some... <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh my God. I, I was going to ask you this one and, and we're going we gonna to shut it down because I'm sure it's late on your time. Uh, in, in your experience, what are some common mistakes couples make when trying to fix a marriage that is already irreplaceable? Oh, so many different things that I see. One, going to family and friends for help and Ooh. talking to them about their relationship. Mm -hmm. Talking to this person who is not qualified to help you. That's a huge mistake. Another one is a lot. I don't, I don't, I don't understand where this concept come from, but bringing a third party in the bedroom, people think that, oh, things are boring and redundant or whatever. Like we struggling, like let's have a threesome. Like, like that's only going to make it worse. Like <laughs> that's happening a lot though, Sherelle. Yes. I know it's like absurd to me. And it's just like, I try to tell people all the time like that. First of all, if you ain't, oh, this get me heated, but go ahead, go ahead. you ain't even explored one another with just the basics. You guys haven't even done covered, you know, a fraction of what you can do with just the two of your bodies. Why would you bring a third in? You ain't even did X, Y, and Z, you did A, B, and C, and A, B, and C, and A, B, and C, but there's still E through, I mean, what come at the D through Z yeah. that you can explore but before bringing somebody else into the bedroom. Like, I think that's a huge one. But I think another thing is sometimes people also, uh, couples, they brush things under the rug. But not realizing that the more you brush under there, like eventually it's going to turn into a, a lump, a, a, a hump. Mm -hmm. Like you can only do so much. I say, tell people all the time, anything worth doing is worth doing it right the first time. If it ain't resolved, yeah. seek help until it get resolved. It's not going to go away with time. Mm -hmm. There has to be some type of resolution and solution in order to overcome it. Mm -hmm. So those are a couple of things that I think. I love that. Oh my God. So many oh, memorable moments in this. Sherelle, mm -hmm. thank you so much for the time. There's uh yeah, we could have stayed on here for another hour. I there's so much stuff we could talk about, but I want to make sure that I respect your time. Let everyone know how they can get in touch with you. I'll have everything linked up in the description, but 
Let us know how we can contact you. What you you got? guys can find me on Instagram at Sherelle E. Thomas. That's C-H-A-R-E-L-L-E-E-T-H-O-M-A-S. I'm also Sherelle Thomas on YouTube. Um, and yeah, those, oh, SherelleThomas.com is another one where you can visit my website as well. Oh, awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time, Sherelle. Uh, oh. Always feel free to come back. We can... I think we talked about doing this once a month or something like that. Yeah, we did. We need to <laughs> we didn't even get to the questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we're gonna have to, yeah, we're gonna have to double back and and yeah. So yeah, thanks okay. again so much for your time. I appreciate everything that you do and helping everybody get in their life, sexual lives together, because Lord knows. Um, but thanks again, Brave Hearts community. Check out the website, scary to remarry.com. Uh, if you are watching this via YouTube, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Share this with someone because you never know what they are going through. If you are listening to this via podcast, make sure you leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. By doing so, it puts you on a join for a free Amazon gift card. Who doesn't like free stuff? Join our Brave Hearts community on Instagram. We over 200 something members now. We having a personal devotional every morning. So uh, join that community as well. Uh, this is Sean Heineman with special guest Sherelle Thomas. And we are...